the title of the workshop is Molecular Biology in Clinical Oncology. And uh, sometimes we, we quibble about whether we should change the name, but the, what it means is on people who are oncology trained, either medical oncology, surgical oncology, um, pathology, radiation oncology, basically any medical subspecialty that would kind of take them into some kind of cancer-based clinical care investigation. Um, those individuals who have now completed, they're either at the end of or near the end of their clinical training, and they're about to go into kind of the research component of their, of their training. The workshop is for people like that who are trying to figure out, do they have what it takes? Do they have the, the desire, the fire in the belly? Do they have the, the skills needed to, to um, take that leap into cancer research as a career? So every summer, 50 students come together in Snowmass, Colorado, together with faculty that are leading cancer researchers, but are mostly also uh, MD trained oncology, or if not oncology, MD trained and do cancer research. And we get together for a week and the goal is to do two things. One is hopefully to give them a general lay of the land of what is exciting now in cancer research. And the second is to give them very concrete exposure to the process of assembling the materials and the thought process around writing a grant proposal. So by the end, hopefully they, they now are ready to write their first career development award grant or the first KO8 grant or what have you. Um, and that's sort of been a concrete metric that we've uh, tried to get the students ready for. What many of them tell us is that they are, they most remember the interactions, the networking, the opportunity to spend lots of time with leaders in the field. And um, that has been pivotal for them. And we like to bring them out of their day-to-day -day environment so they can really be all in during that week. You know, they're up early, they're in lectures, they're in laboratory sessions, and then in the evenings, they're working as teams to think about how to come up with an exciting grant proposal. It is a competitive application process. We have actually, we, we've seen the, the number of applications go up steadily over the past few years. Last year, in fact, it was the highest that we'd seen in almost a decade. That's good, That that tells me that Despite the challenges out there, funding-wise, people are still excited and motivated to consider this investigational path. So we're very pleased to see that. When I first had an opportunity to be a faculty in this workshop, uh, I was a junior faculty at the time. And I have to say that during some of the notes on grant writing and uh, career development, I was taking notes like I was one of the students because I thought, wow, these are some really good tips. So I think that these are principles, th these are timeless principles that we're conveying. They're not principles that will only be relevant to people at a particular point in their career. My first encounter with ACR was when I was a resident. I was a resident in internal medicine, so I had not yet started my clinical oncology training, but I was doing my clinical training. And I had a block of time where I could do, I was on a, an elective and I was on a research elective. And it just so happened that my research elective coincided with an AACR meeting. Uh, it, it was, back then they used to call it oncogenomics. So this was in the golden age. Cancer genomics was just opening up. And it was a transformative meeting because, you know, I fly out there, I'm not doing any research yet, but I have a chance now to meet right away uh, a bunch of postdocs, junior faculty who are doing research and and spend time with them and realize that, wow, this is not inaccessible. These are people just like me who are going up there and doing these, making these remarkable observations. And uh, so therefore, when I get done with my clinical training, I'll be able to do the same thing. And having that feeling about a field that you're thinking about going into uh, can be a huge uh, shot in the arm in terms of staying on the course, even when things are hard to kind of get there and be part of that. The big picture advice that I would give anybody is that cancer research is certainly exciting, but as with any other field, if you really want it to go well, you got to work hard and you've got to be able to push through the challenges. So, you know, the first thing is any new trainee wants to be on that scale and the sweet spot of what do you love and what are you good at? So you have to kind of look in the mirror and take stock of that. So now if you have the level of, uh, 
intellectual and te technical skills that it takes to do sometimes very complicated laboratory research or computational research, and you have the passion, you've got that fire in the belly, okay, that's, that's the first step. Then I would say the next most important thing is to choose a great mentor. And the definition of a great mentor is not just a wonderful scientist, but that the mentor should also be someone that you would be happy to emulate as a person because it's gonna be a lot of work. It's gonna be a lot of hours, a lot of sacrifice. So you've gotta feel like who I'm gonna be, not just how many papers I publish, but who I'm gonna be overall, I see that in a mentor. So that's the second thing. And then the third thing I would say is pick an important problem. And that requires understanding the field, thinking about what are the unmet needs, what are the unanswered questions, the fundamental unanswered questions, and is one of these something where my training and expertise could make an impact and go for it.